bland, dry, and a waste of good lamb. Hi, it's Fabs, and welcome back to A Fab Kitchen. So today we are doing our final overview of Cook, Eat, Repeat by Nigella Lawson. This cookbook is currently Nigella Lawson's latest cookbook. And for those of you who don't know who Nigella is, she is a famous British television cook slash food author who started out her career in journalism as a book reviewer and restaurant critic. So the first cookbook that she ever published was called How to Eat and that sold over 300,000 copies in the UK. It led to many more of her cookbooks being published as well as a multitude of television cooking series. She is now a household name all around the world, having sold over 8 million cookbooks worldwide. The cookbook that we focused on in this series, Cook, Eat, Repeat, is full of recipes that Nigella herself enjoys so much that she tends to repeat often in her household. Accompanied alongside this cookbook was a series that aired in winter 2020 on BBC sharing the same name, and I assume it was used as some form of advertisement. So let's take a look at this book. Every official recipe has a photo to accompany it. And I say official recipe for a reason, because what I love about this book is for every official recipe that you do have, there's usually at least one other recipe included in the introduction to it. So not only do you get around 50 official recipes, but you also get 40 other recipes, well around that, around 40 other recipes included free of charge. As we open the book and take a look at the contents page, one thing I notice is that it's not set up in the way that the average cookbook is set up, as in like starter, main dessert, but rather a random array of titles. For example, we've got A is for anchovy, pleasures, and I mean if that doesn't shout a Nigella kind of title, I don't know what does. <laughs> a love and defence of brown food, rhubarb, much depends on dinner, and Christmas comfort. I quite like these sections because they speak more to the food and you kind of know what you're getting into before you actually take a look at the recipes. Although I assume it can't be the greatest if you don't like rhubarb or anchovies knowing that there are two entire sections devoted to the use of those ingredients. But personally I think it's quite exciting. And this being my fifth cookbook I have finally become accustomed to the fact that food authors do not like to write down how long any kind of dish is going to take. Like, to be fair, I understand the reasoning behind it because I guess it depends on the skill of the cook. But just because I understand it doesn't mean I have to like it. I mean, it does make sense, so I guess I'm just going to have to deal with it. And yeah, don't at me if in the future I decide to, you know, publish a cookbook and I don't put any kind of timing. <laughs> As per usual, I tried one veggie, one fish, one meat and one dessert recipe. So we started out with the no need bread and... If this was quite nice, this was really nice toasted, albeit a little sharp, but it wasn't great as bread. It was far too dry to be used as sandwich bread. Do take a look at the videos that pop up if you want more information on any of the recipes or to see how I fared during the process. But overall, I gave this a 4.3 stars. Mm -hmm. Next we moved on to the spaghetti with charred chilies and anchovies and I really enjoyed this. It was light and as someone who hasn't enjoyed anchovies in the past this was an absolute shocker. You can't really taste the fishiness of the anchovies but you can taste the umami and depth that this brings to the dish. Paired with the earthiness and vibrancy of the chard this was a match made in heaven and it was perfect for spring summer. So I awarded this a five star and it was well deserved. Then we got on to the dish I was most excited about after watching the Cook, Eat, Repeat series on BBC and this was the wide noodles with lamb shank in aromatic broth. And all I can say was this was a huge disappointment. Bland, dry and a waste of good lamb. I will not be attempting this again. This was honestly a waste of my time, my effort and my money. So overall, I awarded this a 3.2 star, and that was only because it was technically edible. There's no seasoning to this. And finally, we ended with the lemon and elderflower drizzle cake. And as nice as this was, the texture was way off. 
like literally at the time when I was pouring this syrup I was like oh my goodness this is way too much this is way too much but you know I legit had to follow the recipe I don't know why I'm adding legit in but I had to follow the recipe because that's what I gotta do and it was just mushy as mushy as can be I felt like I was eating baby food you know when it's just and I also personally thought it was a little bit too sweet and you couldn't really taste the elderflower like you could maybe taste it on your last bite but as something that is literally marketed as a lemon and elderflower drizzle cake I expected there to be more more elderflower taste but there really wasn't if it was marketed as just a lemon drizzle cake with a hint of elderflower that'd be different but it was a lemon and elderflower drizzle cake so I was very disappointed I gave this recipe a 4.3 star and I know this seems high but despite the texture being off, it was this was still really tasty. It was still really nice. It was a bit sweet, but it was it was still nice. It would be perfectly paired with ice cream or something like that. And I just couldn't really fault the instructions as well. They were so clear. So 4.3, in my opinion, seemed quite well deserved. Part of it feels like cake, but then the top of it is like literally mush. You put it in your mouth and just like literally just now for the final review the rip price of this book is 26 pounds but it's often on offer so if you do want to purchase this cookbook click the link down below it is an affiliate link so i will earn something from this i had quite high hopes for this book and despite it not being awful i do feel a little bit let down by some of the recipes but not that spaghetti here because that was banging but despite not being super impressed it is really helpful and you do get more than you pay for with the extra recipes i even tried the banana the banana skin and cauliflower curry 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 <laughs> i did try the banana skin and cauliflower curry in my own time and oh my gosh it was so good if you want to see me making that i will link my tiktok video down below but oh my gosh that was phenomenal i love it and i'm still making it whenever i want to make a curry you know i'm using that base it is lovely but not only are there extra recipes there are so many helpful suggestions to alter it to your diet your taste of preference or even your availability of ingredients she also explains in this book that it's all to do with your taste buds and your preference so she freely accepts altering the recipes to make it your own so despite the fact that I wasn't the biggest fan of the lamb shank and I thought it was a little bit bland. I can't exactly say that this book isn't useful. And to be honest, you're not going to like every single recipe in a cookbook. So three out of four isn't bad, or you could say four out of five isn't bad if we're including the banana skin and cauliflower curry. So would I recommend this book? I liked it, so I'm, I would say yes especially that spaghetti you know i'm still going on about the spaghetti i will never stop talking about that spaghetti spaghetti with it with chili chard and anchovies oh my gosh it was phenomenal so if you're gonna try any of the recipes that i have tried and you are gonna purchase this book definitely try that recipe but comment below if you like the sound of it or if you're actually inclined to actually try it thank you so much for following me through this series the channel is going to be going through a little bit of a change and i hope you're excited to see what's coming up soon but don't forget to like subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos but for now peace. oh my gosh i've got the cat in here <laughs> Say hello to a little cat. Go and do the wave. Okay, so usually it makes loads of noise. It was used as some kind of advertisement.